Described as a Mason's badge and an emblem of innocence, the apron provides a link to Freemasonry's historical roots. As the builders of Europe's great cathedrals, operative Masons utilize the apron as a protective tool of the trade. To the speculative Freemason, who is not an actual stonemason, the apron serves as a tangible reminder of the philosophical foundation of the fraternity and the symbolic labor of Freemasons to build their lives as spiritual temples. Today's Masonic aprons have undergone nearly 300 years of transformation, from simple unadorned lambskins to elaborate works of art and in many Masonic jurisdictions into a formalized and regulated style. By studying the rich past of these treasured ritual garments, we continue to understand and enrich the experience of Masons today. In the 1700s and the early 1800s, most Masons had their aprons made at home, uh, often by a female relative, like their wife or their daughter, or at a local milliner's shop. Uh, and they, as the customer, would provide some information about the kind of design they want. Men could communicate something about the type of symbols that they wanted on the apron. They might have a print source uh, from an engraving or a book. Uh, often Masonic symbols were being used in this period on all kinds of household items, ceramics, furniture. So there were definitely a mix of places that uh, the men could, could find symbols and that women could also have some experience with seeing the symbols and knowing what they were putting on the apron. We have an apron in the, in the archive that's made in northern Pennsylvania around 1807 by Palatine Germans that had colonized that area. So not only are you getting Masonic symbols, but you're getting them as realized or as imagined by a German in that particular part of Pennsylvania in 1807. Masons wear this apron as a form of self-identification, as a badge to show the rest of the world and their Lodge brothers that they are indeed a Mason and they're dedicated to this particular kind of labor. The earliest Masonic aprons were copies of stonemasons' aprons. Uh, the earliest Masonic brethren uh, are brethren who started the organized craft as we know it today, they drew directly from the operatives' uh, aprons. And of course their aprons were large and meant to be a utilitarian garment to protect their clothing. And so the earliest Masonic aprons were exact copies. They were very large compared to what we think of a Masonic apron today and not as symbolic in their outward appearance as we think of Masonic aprons today. They were pure copies of operative aprons. But as masonry came into the United States, the uh, individual artists, the individual masons, uh, began decorating their aprons with symbols of the craft. Uh, colored ribbon, uh, symbolic colors like blue for blue masonry. And um, uh, you see this start to an evolution of the apron from a uh, utilitarian garment to more of a symbolic garment. So by 1870, after the Civil War, with this flourishing of fraternalism and the industrialists meeting a, a demand for regalia of all sorts, they hire laborers that are uneducated, uh, untrained, no artistic ability but they give them the tools to create aprons as quickly and as cheaply as possible. And as such, they utilize a relatively new design, a square and a triangle for a bib. Now, why did they choose that? Why not a curved pattern for an apron like you saw 99% of all other aprons before this time period? Two reasons. One is the ability to produce that design as quickly as possible. You get straight edges. You give a unskilled laborer a template. Get these out as quickly as you can, send them to the seamstress to sew them together as quickly as possible. Also, that simple pattern creates less waste. So you're making a product for as cheap as you can with as little waste as possible. 
no longer is there an artist sitting at an easel creating an original design because that takes too much time. So from the Industrial Revolution, we see what has, or what has influenced our craft to this very day in the regalia that we wear. In the world of fraternalism and regalia, masons are not the only ones to wear aprons. Uh, certainly, the Masonic fraternity has influenced almost, almost all of them, especially in the United States. And so, aprons became a, kind of a go-to item for other, other organizations, such as the Odd Fellows. Uh, even the Junior Order of United Workmen of the World had aprons at one time. Uh, the Elks, I've seen uh, aprons. Uh, these fell out of disuse at different times as they developed either they developed their own special ornamentation or it became too close to Freemasonry for people's comfort. Today even there is a confusion uh, between what is Masonic and what isn't. You'll see at one point Templars even wore aprons and there were several uh, other benevolent organizations and temperance uh, fraternities that also wore aprons and looked like Templars. So with the plumed hats and the black long coats and the, and the triangular aprons with skulls and crossbones, you, it, it was really hard to tell, tell the difference. An apron doesn't necessarily have to belong to another organization in order to be copycat. There are copycat styles within the Masonic fraternity. And I say copycat only because there are certain designs that became very popular over the, over the, over the course of several years and became kind of standards for what Masons wanted on their apron. When a brother approaches me to help him create an apron, uh, it's usually one of two avenues. Either he knows exactly what he wants or something close to it, which makes my job easy. Or he has no idea what he wants. and. Uh, and I help him with this process. And what I like to do is uh, spend time with a brother on the phone if we can't meet in person and just get their thoughts and their feelings about what in masonry they're most attracted to. Uh, and sometimes it's a particular degree uh, or a section of a degree. And sometimes it's very specific symbols from multiple degrees. And from that, uh, uh, we just brainstorm until I get a good idea of the individual things that he would like on his apron. And then I'd spend some time just making sketches and notes and, uh, and create a design, a simple design, not a finished design, uh, which I'll scan or email to him and for his consideration. Usually they go, oh, I really like it, you know. And, and then it just becomes deciding how much uh, the brother wants to uh, invest into his apron. And uh, going from there to produce something that reflects that individual brother. And that's what I want to do. I want to create aprons that a brother says, this is me. This is a physical representation of my commitment to the craft. 19th century Masonic art had a lasting impact that continues to inspire generations of members. More than a ceremonial garment, the apron represents the individual's connection to the worldwide body of Freemasonry. It is his badge and a source of Masonic pride.